everyone, it's Jessie from Bear Flower Farm and right now it is four o'clock. So we are two hours post my Sunday market and we are actually going to do our video backwards today. And that's because I'm actually going to cover quite a bit in this video. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about pricing. So a methodical way for me figuring out how to price my bouquet this week. So I did end up selling $15 market bouquets and I want to talk about how I got that and you know the process that I went through for that. It does involve a spreadsheet so um you know for all you math folks out there uh, you probably who are systematic you'll probably like to see what i did there um but then the other piece that i do want to also talk about is how i how i calculated what each bouquet technically cost me in terms of cost per goods sold so that I could figure out my profitability for today's market. Now I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Today was actually a really good market for me, despite the fact that I was selling at a price point that is $5 lower than what I sold that last, last market. So last market I sold fewer bouquets. I sold, I think it was 19 total bouquets. And along with my soap sales, I sold about um, $700 worth. Today, I sold $800 worth, but my profit was literally three times the amount as last time. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. So um, I am going to talk about these two things later um, as that postmortem recap. So we're going to rewind back to three days ago when I first started harvesting. And you can see just from start to finish um, me making the bouquets and then me basically going to market. And then we'll talk about the number stuff. Hey guys, it's Jesse from Bear Flower Farm and today is Thursday. So we are three days out from my farmer's market, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Sunday is my market and wow, I have so many blooms. My refrigerator is brimming full. I still have a bunch of snaps, as you can see over here, that still need to get harvested. And these are actually the Potomac series for the apple blossom. So very, very pretty. And then I also, I don't know why I bought ivory and apple blossom basically two white types of snapdragons but these are also coming into bloom and i mean they are just the the ruffles are so lovely but yeah so i actually have an abundance of flowers i'm gonna harvest these tonight i've also got quite a few zinnias here the queen lime series is coming in and there's this like blushy pink that's just amazing I'll show you that one and then I have a lime one and this one actually has two heads stuck onto one so super cool I'm really excited to use those stems there's a few straw flower here which we will be able to use this one's actually a little bit open too much but that's okay um status And of course, sunflowers. So the good news is that I've actually harvested a majority of the sunflowers. That is what is taking up most in my fridge. I've got some status in the fridge. I've got some snapdragon, but you get the idea. This is more blooms than I've ever had to work with. And it's funny because I really have just a lot of sunflowers and a lot of snapdragon. I have a decent amount of zinnias, but you know, not enough to make more than just a few bouquets. So this time, I think I really will be doing straight up stems. Um, this time, I'm actually not going to be purchasing additional filler just because I think I have so many stems that, you know, I'm definitely going to get above 20 bouquets. So I'm going to get to harvesting and I'm going to show you the bouquets that I put together tomorrow. All right, so I am just about to harvest. As you can tell, the sun is setting, so it's early evening. But one really cool thing that I realized was that um, these snapdragons came in a plug. And oftentimes the plug would have not just two, but even three seedlings in a single plug. And I thought, you know, let me just plant them and see what happens. And let me show you the results. So you can see that these are quite tall. This one specifically here on the bottom you can see that this stem was grown very closely to another one that i actually cut earlier um and that's that's not the only one so for example this one here is also you know a fairly good good stem very tall and it's growing alongside next to this one which is coming taller so i am really pleasantly surprised at how well these are growing side by side next to each other even this one over here you can see there's 
multiple stems coming or you know two side by side and we're getting decent height with really decent blossoms and you know we just go down the row so even though i ordered i think it was like 216 in a tray it was more like 400 that i got out of all of this in this space over here hi chance say hi all he cares about is fetch so today we are two days out from market. It is Friday afternoon and here are all the flowers that I've been harvesting over the past week and a half. That is correct. I did not all I did not harvest all of them today or even within the last 40 hours. A majority of these were actually harvested, I would say later last week, early this week. And so I've got a bunch of sunflowers here that were in the fridge. These snapdragons I harvested last night. I have another bucket of snapdragons in the back. I'll show you later. Those were harvested about a week ago. Well, not a week ago, like about five days ago. Um, I've got some status and zinnia. Those were harvested a bit fresh. I've got some Persian crests, which uh, didn't do very well sitting for about a week. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then what else do I have? I have some like dill and some stuff here and there. But um, I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, how I got here because I am a first year flower farmer. Obviously I haven't grown at this scale before. I've never had to use a fridge. I've never had to think about prolonging my stems. And so I see a lot of times people have questions on the Facebook groups. And let me tell you, there are a couple of resources where I guarantee you, it sounds like it's a lot of money, but it's worth the money because it will get you to this. In other words, I could have basically lost all of these sunflowers because they really bloomed last week. And my market was not till for another full week, which meant they wouldn't have lasted till today for me to make bouquet making, let alone for Sunday sale. So first book that you absolutely need to get is this book. Whoops, there's a sticker that somehow, right? I have a barcode sticker that I stuck somewhere and then now it's stuck onto this book. But in any case, um, I'm usually not someone who's super OCD about stuff like this, but it kind of bothers me because this book is so great. Post-harvest handling of cut flowers and greens. A practical guide for commercial growers, wholesalers, and retailers. This is my Bible for post-harvest. Um, it has literally every single type a flower you can imagine for cut flower farming. So I'm gonna give you guys an example. Um, let's go to uh, sunflowers, which is helianthus, I think it's called. Helianthus, yes. So there's two pages here. I love me some footnotes because sometimes when you Google these titles with the authors, you can actually get the paper so you can tell what a nerd I am. But this is actually very, very useful because you can read the science and the research behind this stuff. But what it does is it gives you a bit of general information about this flower. It gives you stage of harvest. So it says, flower should be cut when one or two petals have lift, lifted off the center disc. If cutting at a later stage, the center disc should still be tight, meaning that very few rings of the tiny disc flowers have started to open. The majority of the foliage should be removed as it fades quickly and often looks ragged. I think this is stuff that we kind of all know just from, you know, Googling, YouTubing, and, you know, being on the flower forums. But this is where it starts getting, you know, better. Expected vase life. Vase life varies depending on the cultivar, but seven to nine days can be expected with a holding solution or acidified water. The pollenous cultivars tend to have longer vase lives. Very, very important information here because I know now I should be putting it in a holding solution in addition to a CVBN tablet. Then there is a section here that says grower, wholesaler, and retailer treatments. Stem should be cut into and held into a commercial holding solution or acidified water, basically what I just said. Sunflowers are greatly or are, are prone to water stress problems, so make sure stems stay hydrated as the heavy flower heads can exacerbate this problem. Commercial hydrating solutions are not necessary, but slow release chlorine tablets, aka a CVBN tablet, are effective at preventing stems from decomposing, especially in hot weather. So again, another good piece of information here, if you didn't know that sunflowers were dirty stem, now you know why you have to put in a CVBN or chlorine releasing tablet. This is where the money is over here. Storage and shipping procedures. 
Flowers harvested at a stage with more closed petals travel better by reducing potential petal damage. This is true for most flowers. Flowers can be stored at 36 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit or two to five degrees Celsius for up to one week. If lengthy storage is anticipated, cut when flowers are more open than just one or two petals as the cold storage may inhibit opening. Sunflowers are particularly responsive to high storage temperatures, which increase their respiration rate, thereby decreasing vase life. Due to the sensitivity, care should be taken to make sure they are stored as cool as possible. So, you know, obviously gives me confidence that these can definitely go into the fridge. They should be going into the fridge and even what temperature to set the fridge at. And this was like 36 to 41 degrees gives me a pretty good range. And I quickly realized that, you know, I was setting my fridge actually to around the 41, 42 degree mark, but the top part of the fridge, because it's so close to the freezer for whatever reason is a lot colder. So this is what happened. Let me move the beautiful snaps out of the way so you can see the sacrificial sunflowers here. Dun, dun, dun. So let me lift it closer. These got burned. These got freezer burned, but it's okay. It's a few, it's a few out of this giant bucket. Um, let me show you what it looks like. So this stem is clearly unusable um, because the stem here is black. So this is what happens when it gets stored too cold. And you can tell it's just one side because this is kind of brushing up against the side closer to the freezer. And I knew this was gonna happen because throughout the week I was putting sunflowers in, taking them out. It was just not avoidable because I only have one fridge and it was already an effort to stuff all these flowers in there. So post harvest book, makes me super, super confident about storage and extending my bloom time since my market is every other weekend. Now, if you don't need to extend your bloom times, um, you know, I still think this is helpful because it like, what is the point of baiting a seedling, getting it to harvest, growing this perfectly aesthetic stem and then screwing up post harvest, right? Like it's just not worth the risk to me. So um, unfortunately this book is pretty expensive but it is $70 if you are a member of the America, uh, uh, of the Association of Specialty Cut Flower Growers. And this is a membership, this is number two, a resource um, that I would recommend. This is, this is a membership that I wish I got a little bit earlier because not only do you, um, you know, get their Cut Flower quarterly magazines, you get access to a Facebook group with all of these growers, you get access to their research, um, grants for research that um, they had done in the past to basically learn more about flowers. So for example, you know, they actually have, like for the past few years, they stopped in the last couple of years, but they have archives of just post vase life um, and how they do in like just fresh water versus water with flower food. And one of the things I learned was that pro cut flowers, you might get an extra day out of them if you put flower food in them, but you're really not gonna extend it by that much. So that's good information for me to know too. Um, membership is, um, God, I can't remember how much the membership is. I'm gonna look it up and I'll put it up here. But you know, I, I think it was really worth it. And when you get the membership, you get a discount on this. So I believe this book was 70 something dollars. Again, I'll double check and I'll put it up on the screen here. Um, expensive, I know for a book. But again, if you can save stems like this, you've made back the $70. One more research source, just to make sure. I think most people know this resource, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway this beautiful book, Specialty Cut Flowers by Armitage, Alan Armitage. Um, it again has basically every single flower. And in some ways, I like they also cover post harvest here. It's just, it's inconsistent in terms of how much detail they get into post harvest in this book versus in this book. In this book, they have the standardized sections that I you know read through. In this book, it's kind of just whatever research was done at the time is whatever they put in here. So for some of the stuff like zinnias, the post-harvest details are actually a lot more elaborate in here than it is in here. But there are some flowers where I barely get any kind of post-harvest information in here. So you marry the two together. This is like soup to nuts, how to start, how to grow, greenhouse, 
in the field, all that kind of stuff. It has like a bunch of different variety or cultivars for, you know, um, for each type of flower that you're growing. So I cannot recommend this enough. And I believe on if on the website, if you remember, it's $35. So this one's a lot more affordable. And if you only had it, you could only choose between these two, one of the two, I would choose this one first. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, um, don't let this fool you. It is a lot of flowers, but <laughs> I'm laughing because I thought I would have all of these flowers every other weekend for my market. And this is the first time I've had so many flowers and I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Um, not overwhelmed in the sense I have to make bouquets. You know, today is Friday. My market's not until Sunday. I like to do it um, on Friday afternoons just because it gives me Saturday free and we have company over on Saturday. So, um, but in any case, I, I have so many sunflowers that I think I want to do straight bunches this time. And I even want to try to do some straight bunches of the Snapdragon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you specifically what I have right now. Before I start our lovely tour, I just want to show you what is generating that background sound. Um, again, my dog chewing his chuck it ball. So sorry for the background noise that's going to be present. All right, so this is the first bucket of sunflowers. I stuffed as much into this bucket as I could. I would guess there's probably about 60, 70 stems in here. There's a second sunflower bucket. And one thing to note is that all of these flowers were harvested um, Friday or later, meaning a whole week earlier or later. So it is very easy to tell which were harvested uh, late last week because they are now opening up and this is the perfect stage that I want because these will be a lot more open by Sunday. But when I combine it with a stem like this and then even a stem like this, it gives me a variety of um, sunflowers in different opening stages and really helps extend that phase life. So I've got a lot of sunflowers. I've got quite a bit of status here that was freshly harvested. My zinnia are coming in um i mean there are some very very cool queen line series in here it's kind of getting um how do you say it? the the weight of the status is really um you know kind of kind of making this seem like there's not a lot but there's actually quite a bit of flowers in here um i've actually got some more status in the back over here so here let me show you the status over here was actually harvested also last week the problem is these did not get priority in the fridge and you can see they're a little bit crushed, but it's okay. Cause some of them have actually, I feel like started drying in some ways. Um, we've got snapdragons over here. So these snapdragons were also in the fridge. They have been in the fridge for five days as of today. And you can tell they're still doing pretty well, right? Let me show you a new bucket of snapdragons that I harvested. You really cannot tell the difference. This is the one that I harvested yesterday. And you'll know, you'll notice that everything else is pretty much in these big buckets, except for the snapdragon. This one's in a vase. Those are in um, taller, narrow buckets. And the reason why I do this is because it allows the snapdragon stem to remain straight when I'm storing it. Um, without me needing to wrap it tightly. So I like the flexibility with that. So I have a lot of Snapdragons. It's it's mainly Potomac. It's the Ivory uh, Madame Butterfly. Anything that is not Apple Blossom or Ivory Madame Butterfly is what I started from seed. So that tells you how much I would have gotten if I didn't buy plugs. Persian Crest, probably one of my bigger fails. I harvested these way too late. I did not realize how quickly they would start drying <laughs> out, um, especially in the heat. So you can start seeing some of it starting to yellow, but you know, some of these are still, they're still good. I actually have a bucket downstairs that's in my view unusable because it's just way too dried out and yellow, but we'll see how this goes. So I'm not gonna use a ton of it in every single bouquet, but I will use some. Um, dill. So dill, if you've been following along, was kind of a cover crop for me, used it for some culinary uses, but figured this would act as good filler. So you can tell that I have quite a bit of quantity of flowers, but not a ton of variety of flowers. And that's okay, because year one, you want to focus. Um, my focus was, I hope you can tell, 
sunflowers and snapdragons. I think I achieved that visually here. Um, it does make it a little bit difficult to make bouquets with interest, but my plan here is I'm gonna do some bouquets with zinnias, snapdragons, the smaller sunflower heads here, some status, some Persian crest, and kind of make those like a market bouquet. Then I'm just gonna do straight up stems of sunflowers and snapdragons. Um, I'm still thinking about the pricing. I might, I was even considering like build your own bouquet, but not like buy stem at the farmer's market. That'd be absolutely chaotic. I was thinking about like, I'll do, I'll sell bunches in $5 increments. So build your own bouquet, get like, um, you know, a, a, a handful of snapdragons for $5, a handful of dill filler for $5, a handful of zinnias for $5. But realistically, I don't know if I have enough non-focal flowers for that. So we'll see what I have left over. But for this video, one of the things, or for this bouquet making session, one of the things I'm actually gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to keep track of how many stems I harvested this week, because I've not been very good at doing that. So I'm gonna be keeping a notebook with a column for sunflowers, snapdragon, zinnia, status, you get it. So that way, at least I know, hey, I, I made 20 bouquets out of X amount of stems, and it also keeps me honest to make sure that I am selling my bouquets at the right price. All right, it is four hours later, almost four hours later, and I really didn't take a break. So now I see why Serena from You Can't Eat the Grass, you know, stays up all night to make bouquets because it is a bit of a laborious process. So I finally made straight stems of sunflowers. So let me show you. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm doing six for $15. Um, in the instance where I have a bit smaller heads, um, I'm doing seven for $15. But so these are just straight up bunches and I mean, they're just so cheery. So I got, I wanna say eight or nine straight bunches of that. So just that alone is like 50 stems over there. I still have more sunflower stems. Now, some of them started getting um, petal damage from, I think it's like flea beetles. So I'm not gonna use those for sale, but I use a lot of the smaller heads for some of the bouquets that I made. So for example, let's see, move this over here. Like this one you can see, um, you know, there's like, all of the bouquets have anywhere from three to four sunflowers, depending on how many zinnias are in here. There's a couple of snapdragon status, so Persian crest dill in this one. And then this one even has, I believe, straw flower right over here. Give you another example. So this one's got a big zinnia in the middle. It's kind of a little bit hidden. There's a second zinnia over here. There's one, two, two, sunflowers here mainly because um there were really good zinnias and then i have a few pieces of status snapdragon and then some more persian crest so now let me take the paper off of it so you can see it there you go um i was intending on making 15 dollar bouquets these feel like they're a little bit more so i'm still i'm gonna sit on the pricing tomorrow um because i still have another full day let me show you one more let's see which one shall i show you Ooh. there's actually two that I want to show you this one the color combination with the queen lime a couple of zinnias there and this one with a red zinnia and I just love the red versus the violet status the yellow sunflowers so yeah um one of the things that I said I was going to do was I was going to tally how many flowers of each kind I put in per bouquet. So let me show you what I did. So 
here is my trusty Remarkable, aka Digital Notebook. And what I did was I did it for every single bouquet. I have Sunflower, the type of Snapdragon, Apple Blossom, Ivory, Madame Butterfly, Other Snap, Zinnia, Status, Crest, Strawflower. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 bouquets. And what I'm gonna do after this is I'm gonna tally up how many stems are in each. Um, I'll show it actually up on the screen so you guys have it. And that will actually give me a better idea for how I should be pricing. Um, yeah, I mean, but most of these, I think it was pretty consistent that I was doing at least like 12 stems. Um, I did count like a little sprig of, of Persian crest as one, um, but still um, the value is definitely there, especially with the sunflower. So um, this will resume on market day. I actually think I have a few more bouquets left to make. There's a lot of Snapdragon out in the field. Oh, I forgot to mention one of the things I did do was I made some straight bunches here. So these are straight bun bunches of apple blossom with some of um, the apricot status. I just had so much snapdragon. Um, the weird thing about these snapdragons was I harvested them, I want to say two days ago. They um, Some of them went into the fridge and um, there were some that I harvested even um, further out. Uh, so like, let's say around Monday and those are not doing super well. The petals are dropping, so I'm not going to sell those. But um, there's still quite a few outside, so I'm probably going to harvest in the morning tomorrow and make them into straight bunches like this. Hey guys, we are one day out from the market. Today is Saturday and excuse my unkempt basement, but I wanted to show you the state of my flower. So my basement right now is probably around like 55 to 57 degrees. It stays between like a 53 to 57 degree range uh, throughout the year. So this is a relatively cool spot compared to the rest of the house. I mean, we with the AC on keep the house at probably like 70 to 72 degrees, right? So this is a good 15 degree drop from that upstairs. Um, the sunflowers, um, just to give you an idea, are really in i think perfect shape for tomorrow so you can see that some of them have really started to open up but they're not fully blown open and again these were picked most of them actually anywhere from now i would like more than a week ago right so we're talking about like plus nine days um to basically like three days ago and so i have a whole entire video on how i am able to harvest these at a very, very tight bud stage, put them into the refrigerator. Um, I'll make sure that the link to that video is below. If not, you know, it will pop up at the end of the video as a video card. But you know, these are, these are really, really quite good. And there are a couple that I made. This one's a, this one's a good example where some of the buds are still really, really tight. And so these are the ones that I picked um, just like two days ago or even today. So this is that tight bud form that I'm looking, if not even tighter when I'm picking it. And that allows me to achieve this um, basically day of market. So um, I continued harvesting today, making some more bouquets. I think I made like six more bouquets. So we have quite a bit for tomorrow. Um, I actually did my analysis of um, the stems. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in my what I call the post-mortem review of the market. But as of right now, I am going to be selling the majority of these bouquets for $15. And I'm going to be selling some of these straight bunches probably for like $12 to $15. Um, actually, $10 to $12 for some of the really, really small ones. Um, some people will get up in arms about this, but I'll be honest, like, I don't think I can sell this guy over here for $15 at the market when, you know, most other stuff is going for $15. And it's going to be hard, I know, to fetch $20 for those kind of bouquets. So, you know, this one has a decent amount of stems over here, but, you know, like, people get all up in arms about pricing. You know, I think it's one thing for you to consistently underprice. It's another thing for you to feel like you know your market and know what you can and can't get for it. Like, you know, I could be stubborn and try to get $15, $20 from this, which, you know, if I lived in like LA or New York City, I totally could, but I don't. And so I would rather get something for this 
then nothing for this. And at this point, I already have like four vases around the house for flowers for us. So, you know, this would go in the compost and yeah, we'll see how this goes tomorrow. Hey guys, we are 10 minutes away from market opening. It's 9.50 a.m. And we set up in record time. Uh, all this soup to nuts was 30 minutes. So we're trying to cut down on set of time to also cut down on basically labor costs that we're paying to ourselves. So let me show you the setup very quickly. Hey everyone, we are two hours into the market. It's been kind of crazy today. You can see I've sold out a lot of my bouquets. Surprisingly, just one straight up sunflower bunch. So a little bit surprising for me, but at least the other stuff um, is definitely selling. All right, we are down to our last hour. Um, you can see I literally don't have many bouquets left. I actually had to drop the price of the sunflowers. And one of the things that I realized I should be doing is when we enter into like our last hour and 20 minutes of the market, um, I end up dropping the price as a whole just to move the flowers because I'd rather make something than nothing off of the flowers. So we still have another hour left. It's usually very, very slow, but we'll see what happens. First off, let's talk about pricing my stems. Now, me literally recording down how many stems I put in for each bouquet of each particular flower was critical in helping me determine this. So as you can see on this spreadsheet over here, I recorded my bouquet making for 19 bouquets. I ended up making an additional, I think it was four bouquets the next day because I just had more to harvest from the field. Um, but it gave me a really good idea for one, was I staying true to my idea of wanting to make a $15 bouquet? And two, was I being consistent for all of the bouquets? Because I think without that like formal, formal recipe, which I've realized is hard to do unless if you just have a lot of the same exact stems. And I didn't necessarily have a lot of the same exact stems um, for this round, right? Because I had like a bunch of zinnias, but then, you know, I had more snapdragon and so forth. So you get the point here. Um, what I found out was that I was averaging 13 stems per bouquet. Now, these 13 stems include my focals like a sunflower, like a queen lime zinnia, but they also included these ancillary flowers that are like a snapdragon or straw flower or status, right? And then they even include the very smaller fillers here like a Persian crest. Now, one of the things that I really messed up with Persian crest was I harvested it too late. Um, I harvested it when some of the leaves were already turning yellow and by the time I got to my Friday before um, the market, a lot of the Persian crest just started really drying out and yellowing to the point where I wasn't comfortable using it. So I was able to use some of the Persian crest. In fact, I still had some Persian crest left over, but if it was a small sprig, I was counting it as one stem. So I want to make sure that you're aware that when I say I average 13 stems per bouquet, not all stems were created equal here because it's going to matter when I talk about the pricing piece of it. Now, when I think about the 13 stems, um, I also wanted to see from a bouquet perspective, um, how did I do in terms of consistency, in terms of making sure I had a similar number of focal flowers, similar number of sunflowers. This is where I kind of failed. I got more generous towards the end. My first few bouquets were actually the least generous. Um, that being said, they still sold really, really well because they had pops of color. That was actually a really interesting learning for me, which is that when you're a cust like no one cares about number of stems or no one's paying attention to number of stems. They're really paying attention to variety and color. So the snap, so the bouquets that sold first consistently were bouquets that had some sort of zinnia in there, even if it was a really small zinnia, just for that pop of color. Um, they really loved it, um, even though it might have been a smaller and a shorter bouquet. And this is kind of validated by the fact that I was talking to a friend and my friend's mother-in-law bought a bunch of snapdragons. I was asking her how much did she pay for them? And she said that, oh, she basically paid like eight to $10 for a bunch. And so when she asked, well, how many were in a bunch, her mother-in-law didn't know how to answer it. So kind of further validates what I'm saying here. But in any case, my bouquets had anywhere from two to five 
sunflowers. Now these were not big sunflowers. These were, you know, some of the smaller, more manageable ones for the bouquets. And I know that when I got towards the end of the bouquet making process, I had fewer flowers to work with. So those bouquets that had five sunflowers had basically just snapdragon and status um, and maybe a little bit of crest, but they certainly didn't have any zinnias. Now, the irony is that when you think about it from a value perspective, those bouquets were worth way more than the bouquets that I made earlier, yet those bouquets sold later. So let me repeat, the bouquets that were smaller but had more variety and more color sold more quickly than the better value bouquets which had more sunflowers and even more snapdragon so i would say towards the end of my bouquet making i had anywhere from 14 to 17 stems in the beginning of my bouquet making i was having 12 to 14 stems so it kind of gives you an idea there and it kind of really just dispels this notion of like what is value, right? Um, you know, it, it makes no sense or it doesn't matter if you're valuing your bouquet at $20 and you have all of these amazing focals and everything, but the customer doesn't see that kind of value and they would rather go for something that technically is valued less, but would pay still the same amount of money, right? So just a few very interesting learnings for me here. I'm just glad I'm gonna have more zinnias. Um, you know, this is really the main reason why you can't, um, it's hard to make money by just growing focals, right? You really need that filler to help round out that bouquet, but, you, but it's also made me realize that you need variety. The other thing that this thing made me realize was because I made mixed bouquets, those sold so much faster than the sunflower straight bunches. In fact, I had sold through, I would say 15 of my 21 mixed bouquets before I sold a single bunch of straight sunflower stems. I was shocked. I thought the sunflower stems were gonna go first. So what I did was I put six sunflowers per bunch for $15. And if the sunflowers were a little bit smaller, then I would, I would put seven heads. I mean, these were high quality pro cuts. Um, I grew a variety of pro cuts. So they were all like different shades of oranges and they were, I mean, the sunflowers were what drew people to my, to my booth. So from a number of transactions perspective, I almost doubled the number of transactions last time. I had like 27 people come by this time. I had 43. So maybe not double, but I had a significantly more amount of foot traffic coming in. And I do attribute that to the sunflower. So what I think happened was people saw some sunflowers in my bouquets and even if it was just like two or three sunflowers, that was enough for their fix of sunflowers. They didn't need all of these sunflowers that were bigger. They wanted that variety. So when my, um, when my mixed bouquets were basically selling out, I had like two or three left. We were about an hour and 20 minutes away from the market being shut down. Now, I don't know how markets are like around you, but the last hour for our market is dead. Like it's, th there's a joke with the vendors that, you know, if we could leave, we would leave earlier, but we can't. Um, and like, you're lucky if you even get like one or two sales. It so happens that I had a very busy last 30 minutes because I dropped the price of my bouquets. I dropped the sunflowers down to $10 for a bunch of six to seven stems. Um, some of you might be like, that is suicide. You are completely, um, undervaluing yourself and, you know, yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that sunflower stems can go for upwards of two, two fifty, even $3 a stem, depending on where you are. But what good is that if no one's going to buy it? When I dropped it to $10, it was just like everyone was buying them. Um, I think people who would normally never buy flowers were buying sunflowers, so I was left with one bunch of sunflowers that I ended up gifting to the next vendor um, by me um, because we always swap food. So we got some mushrooms and some asparagus from him, but it was it was crazy just that that ten dollars versus fifteen dollar perception for sunflowers. So going forward, I will continue to price my sunflowers at ten dollars, but I'm not going to do six to seven stems. I'm probably going to do four to five stems now. The other thing to note though, is that even though I dropped the price of my sunflowers, they were still probably, not probably, they were more profitable than my mixed bouquets that I sold for $15. And the reason is because sunflowers are the easiest flowers to grow. I literally seed them with an earthway seeder. So I'm seeding a couple hundred at once. 
and that's it maybe i water it a little bit because there's you know no rain in the forecast i don't have irrigation set up yet that's it i do not fertilize i do not water them after and the only time I touch the next is when I'm harvesting them. So when I'm harvesting them, obviously that is a little bit more intensive because I have to walk back and forth to see when they're blooming. And remember, these were sunflowers. If you have been following my videos that I harvested out, basically most of them a week in advance that I put into my cooler. In fact, I harvested a decent amount nine days out from the market and they basically made it to market and you know I got money from them. So when you do the price per stem, six stems for $10, it comes out to roughly $1.67 per stem. When you think about the cost of seed, like yes, sunflowers cost more than other types of flowers by seed because the pro cuts are one and done. The seeds are just, you know, a little bit more expensive, but they're like, I mean, not dollars more expensive per seed. They're, you know, cents. So $1.67 per stem plus the reduced amount of labor for sunflowers makes it way more profitable than me putting together a bouquet that has sunflowers, status, snapdragon some zinnias because remember i have to harvest all of those separately and then when i time myself making a straight step like straight bouquets of sunflowers versus mixed bouquets it was literally twice the amount of time and effort needed to make a mixed bouquet versus a sunflower bouquet so i actually think that even at ten dollars it's pretty profitable and especially if i can just put four or five stems in it and i'll make sure that they're bigger sunflowers next time like that will be very profitable. So that really contributed to why my market this time was so profitable. So in addition to recording the number of stems per flower type that I put into every single bouquet, I then assigned a value for each kind of stem. So for example, for my sunflowers, I assigned a retail value of $1.75. For my snapdragons, I assigned a value of $1.25 cents, uh, cents per stem. I did the same for, um, I also recorded down Ivory Madame Butterfly. That was also $1.25. And I grew some other snapdragons from seed. Those I only put at $1 per stem because um, they were picked a little bit earlier. Um, they were a little bit shorter. It was just, it was less of a quality for me. Um, and so therefore I put them at a dollar. I also put zinnias at a dollar a stem, status at a dollar a stem, which is actually way above wholesale price because usually they're sold by the bunch. Um, and then I put um, each Persian crest at 50 cents, again, way above, and then straw flower at $1.25 stem. So you can tell that with some of the underpricing, it really helps mellow or it helps balance out some of the stuff that I, pretend, I potentially underpriced, like um, some of the Snapdragons, right? Because um, technically like $1.25 feels more like a wholesale rate, but you know, I'm, I'm doing what I feel is fair for, for charging, right? So because I am able to assign a very specific per stem price, I can then multiply that per stem price by the number of stems in every single bouquet. And that is how I get to how much each bouquet is valued in the world of a flower farmer, right? Because we understand how much each stem is supposed to cost, but the customer doesn't get it or the customer doesn't think about it that way. So when I averaged out all my bouquets, believe it or not, I got $15 out of it. It was like $15 and 10 cents. Now I had some bouquets at the lower end of the range uh, priced, or basically they were priced at a $13 price point based off of the stems in there. And I had some that were as high as $18, but at the end of the day, they balanced out. And again, the ones that were valued at $18 were the ones that sold slower or later than the ones that were actually valued lower at like that $13 price point. So, you know, this, like, I think the number of stems plus looking at how much that bouquet is worth based off of you assigning a price per stem by flower type is a really good way for you to gut check to see if you are pricing your bouquets the right way. And I know that there are certain people who might disagree with my per stem pricing, or they may just think that, hey, like it looks like a $20 bouquet. And look, you might be right. You know, if I had priced my bouquets by an extra $5, I would have made an extra like $150 today. But the point is that I sold out and I'm pretty sure I would not have sold out if they were priced at $20 because that's what I priced them at last time and I didn't sell out, right? So a bird in hand is better than two and none. Is that the saying? 
<laughs> My husband just corrected me. What is it, Eric? A bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. A bird in hand is better than two in the bush. I'm very bad with idioms, so <laughs> he was laughing at me. Um, anyway, let's move on to um, profitability and how I was able to determine a cost per bouquet. Because this time I didn't have to buy stems off of my local grower. I had a lot of flowers. So what I did was I didn't really think about this in terms of the cost of seed or the cost of fertilizer and all that stuff. Because to be honest, I really don't do a lot of fertilizing. I don't do a lot of watering. Even if I did, we have well water. So you get the point. I looked at cost in the perspective of labor because at the end of the day, labor is going to drive like 95% of the cost of the flowers that you grow and sell. Labor obviously, you know, goes from starting from seed to nurturing the seed to harvesting to making the bouquet. I focus on the later part of it. And the reason is because primarily my, the majority of stems in my bouquets this time around were sunflowers, which we already talked about as being very, very low maintenance um, in terms of effort needed. But there were also snapdragons and status. So I'll say that status is awesome to grow because even though I did start them from seed and have to transplant them, they're like, I treat them like a weed. I don't water them. I don't fertilize them. I just let them do their thing and they seem to be pretty happy about it. For the snapdragons, those are usually a little bit more time intensive, but I bought plugs. So yes, you could argue that I need to put in the price of the plugs in there. Um, the plugs were basically, I think it was like $45 for a tray of 216. And that tray of 216 had like basically two, two seeds per cell. And when I planted them next to each other, as you saw earlier, you know, they flowered. So it was kind of like 400 for $40. So again, in the grand scheme of just, you know, I, I didn't use all 400 stems, right? I only use, I probably harvested about like 80, 90 this round. So in the grand scheme, labor is still a bigger cost than how much I paid for those plugs. So 80, 20 rule, right? Pareto principle, focus on what is driving the bulk of whatever is moving the needle versus trying to focus on everything because then you're going to go crazy. So the point being here is I focused on how much did it cost for me to harvest and put the bouquets together. And so I determined that that really took about like eight hours total, which honestly is being generous in a conservative way. It probably took like 10 to 12 hours, but some of it is just, you know, me being inefficient, me just like getting distracted out when I'm out in the field. So we'll call it eight hours with the bulk of that eight hours being or actually eight hours, four hours of it was bouquet making and four hours of it was actually me going out and harvest. Now, the good thing about harvesting sunflowers is that, you know, very easy, one and done, you just pick it, um, take off the leaves, put it in a bucket, put it in the fridge. The snapdragons were way more laborious. Um, and even though it was easy, like it wasn't laborious because there was netting or anything. It was laborious because I have a bit of thrip pressure and I am very much of the mindset that, I do not want my customers equating locally grown flowers with bugs. So what I do is I actually dip the snapdragons into soapy water. So I put it in a bucket of water with Castile liquid soap and I swish it around for about 15 seconds. And that really gets rid of the majority of the thrips. I will do that a second time if I feel like that the petals have thrips in there that haven't died or haven't fallen out yet. And it gets to the point where I will even take off the petals um, if there are still thrips alive after a second dunk. Because, you know, one or two thrips in your Snapdragon is fine. But the last thing I want is for someone to open up a Snapdragon bud and see things crawling around in it. Because not only have I deterred them from buying from me in the future, I potentially deterred them from buying local at, in, in general, right? So the Snapdragons are laborious because of that piece. That piece actually takes quite a bit of time. So that's why, you know, I think realistically it took me about like 10, 12 hours in terms of all that stuff, but I put down four hours and, you know, a lot of it was just, I was multitasking. I was like, might've been on a conference call or two as I was harvesting or, you know, it was just like after dinner and it was just, you know, like, like something relaxing for me to do. So when I did that, I had a total of 30, um, big bouquets and I had, um, I think it was four small bouquets, which I'm calling, uh, they're not small, they were straight stems. So if I get to my spreadsheet over here, um, 
Yeah, so that was um, 33 total bouquets between the two types. So when you do the math, right, I'm paying myself $15 an hour times 10, that's 150. 150 divided by three basically gets you to like a $4 something mark for the bouquets. So I basically priced every single bouquet at $4. So I'm selling a bouquet for $15 and I'm saying that my cost of goods sold was $4 for that bouquet. Again, you know, probably being generous in terms of a lower number than a higher number, but like, you know, you, you can tweak all the numbers you want to get to profitability, right? You can make yourself feel better or you can make yourself feel worse. I feel like I could sleep at night saying it's $4 a bouquet. It feels right for me. My initial guess was gonna be like three to $5. So the $4 is a happy medium. So given that context that my flowers cost me basically $4 um, a bouquet, because I had 34 um, and based on how many I sold, that gets me to $322 for all of the stuff that I sold, which also includes the soaps and candles. So I said earlier in the video, I brought in $828 today. My cost of goods sold for everything was $322. So not bad because now I'm still left with, you know, basically like $566 to play around with for other um, costs. Um, to break down that top line revenue, that $828 was split between $445 of flower sales and $338 of soap sales. 445 is the most I've ever sold in flowers. Um, my first market ever, I bought bouquets. I bought like 24 bouquets. Uh, um, I sold specialty tulips and I did eight for $20. And that honestly was like a stretch, but I was able to sell like 20 of the bouquets. So I made $400. This time I was able to sell 445 of bouquets that I made, which, or I grew, which, you know, has more of a meaning behind that. But in any case, so um, I just said 828, $322 for cost of goods sold. My labor, I factored in my labor at $90. And this is where there's a little bit of what we'll call um, like double dipping, or sorry, not double dipping. Um, I actually took that out. So labor here is labor to operate the market. So we have gotten very, very good at basically um, figuring out how to be more efficient in terms of setup and teardown because there's two ways to influence your profit, right? You can either bring in more money in the revenue side, meaning sell more flowers, or you can cut down on your costs. And as we know, labor is the biggest cost when it comes to flower farming and selling your flowers. So even cutting down half an hour for my husband and myself is one full hour or $15. So we're not able to basically get like drive to the market, set up and come back together for six hours total of manpower time. And a part of it is because we live basically like under 20 minutes from the market. My husband just needs to be with me for about 20 minutes. Um, he helps me get the tent up. He puts some dumbbells down to stabilize the tent. He makes sure that, you know, I'm okay with the tables. And then today he left. He's a realtor. He had an open house. So he picked me up on the way back from his open house and yeah, like super efficient. So six hours, that is $90. The mileage to the market was um, actually, yes, it was 15 or it was $20. So same as last time, didn't have to do any mileage for inventory. So that's zero credit card fees was $12. And then our sales tax was $55 for New Jersey. That leaves me with $328 per, for profit. Um, I'm pretty stoked. Like that's, that's a good number. So again, right? Like I only sold about a hundred dollars more than last time, but because I did not have to buy flowers, um, I didn't have to do extra mileage for inventory. We were more efficient on our setup and teardown uh, time. I actually made a higher profit this time than last time. Last time I made like a hundred something dollars in profit. So this is making it more, um, how do you say more worth my time to do the market. But to be honest, you know, like there's no way I could have gotten to this 800 number if I didn't sell another product, which is soaps and candles. And, you know, candles do really well at these markets. The soaps also do relatively well. I also sold some like I, I sold out my shampoo bars. So it is one of those things where if it's just one, I would not I, I wouldn't be doing this long term. 
Um, it would not be, wor be worth to, to, to sit there for honestly like a few hundred dollars because when you take into account of cost of everything, like you, you don't even break even, right? And like, it's okay if this is your first year and you're only making a couple hundred dollars, like you're getting experience from it. But it, if you're doing this for like five, six years, you know, you really need to be reassessing if that's your situation. So I'm really happy with how this week turned out. It was honestly a little bit stressful because everything decided to bloom at the same exact time. Luckily, I'm going to have zinnias for the next market, but I'm not going to have as many sunflowers. And, you know, I think I'm going to have some gomfrina. So I'm going to have some more variety. I'm going to have some more color, but the sunflowers really attract people. Um, they really, people really love that sunflower in their bouquet and they obviously last a decent amount of time in the vase. So I feel like people just get, just feel like they're getting good value. Um, the other good thing was I actually now have people coming to me at the market looking for my flowers. Um, I had two customers who were basically like, yeah, your flowers lasted for basically two weeks. Like I just threw them away yesterday. So I'm here for another bunch for, for my house until I see you again in two weeks. And that's really encouraging to hear. So the other thing is I do hand out um, flower food with every single bouquet now. I make sure I tell them like, hey, like, you know, trim the stems. I tell them the reason for why they need to trim the stems at a 45 degree angle. It's because if it's a flat cut and it sits against the vase, it's not going to be able to take up water. So cut it at 45 degrees and please change the water every few days at the minimum. And those who do it are able to get close to a two week vase life. Um, and then now I'm also getting messages in my direct messaging box to do just, you know, uh, flowers or even like bi-weekly flowers outside the market. So that is also pretty encouraging here. This was a long video. Um, I hope this was helpful. You know, for me, this is a learning experience, right? It's one thing to see someone sell a $20 bouquet successfully sell out, right? Like I am an avid watcher of You Can't Eat the Grass. Serena and Ian, you know, are really like inspiration for me as to why I started Bear Flower Farm. And, you know, obviously they're doing really well at the $20 mark, um, but they've had a lot of pivots in their business. They've taken hard looks at their business and they've also established a really, um, like like a clientele, right? They've established a following in their local town or city um, to know that, hey, like they have flowers at their farm, st farm stand or at their farmer's market. I think if they shot out of the gate trying to sell $20 bouquets, you know, 50 bouquets every single week, they would have had a hard time, right? It takes time to build up to that. So every, like I, sometimes I get comments around like you are undering your value, undervaluing your bouquets and yes and no, right? So I am doing what I think is going to maximize my total sales. Um, what is going to maximize me being able to move the most amount of bouquets versus, you know, potentially selling at a higher price point, but selling less and therefore make, making less overall. So anyway, drop me some stuff in the comments if you have any questions or if you have anything different, different that you do at your markets that might be helpful for me to read. And I will see you next time.